welcome to Bickering Book Reviews. I'm Sarah. And I'm Becky. And so today we're talking about the book Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland. Not to be confused with Our Chemical Romance, which is what I've been playing for two weeks. It's an awesome band. Great band. Okay, so the quick rundown of it is Henry Page has never been in love until Grace Town walks in the door. He is just so blown away by her and it's kind of just their romance. Um, she's got a few secrets to hide and... That's kind of basically it, though. It's like a romance book. It is. It's like a rom it's like a boy romance book, and then there's drama and angst and all that good stuff. Um, so my first problem, my my issue with this book is I cannot stand Grace Town in any way, shape, or form. I know she's no. too like I don't know why anybody likes her. I don't like no. her. And she keeps saying, I am not, everybody keeps saying, she's not a Manic Pixie Dream Girl. She is the definition <laughs> of a Manic Pixie Dream Girl. She out Manic Pixie Dream Girls Mara Ross Spiegelman. She is that Manic Pixie Dream girl -y. Okay, fair enough. I, yeah, I just don't know why. She's not mysterious. She's mean. Like, <laughs> And I'm sorry, but she has, like, there's reasons for her behavior. And there's reasons for her reactions. And she has serious issues. She needs to have an adult in her life saying, okay, we need to have a conversation and possibly put you on medication. I, if not, like, sending her to a psychiatric institution. I mean, but the thing is, she does have adults in her life right. that do see what's going on. She's lying. But nobody... I mean, they see it. Nobody... But, like, nobody's fixing it. But, like... Because for what she's dealing with, she's a total champ. The way I she's mean, dealing with it. Yeah, I, I guess. However, she definitely went off the rails. Oh, though. she is, like... The rails are, like, a dot to her. She's so far off the rails. Yeah, like... She needs some serious help getting back into a mentally sound life. <laughs> right, and so I just kind of like the relationship between her and Henry, it comes off on the page. It does seem like realistically with those two people, that is what happened. I just didn't care that much. I just couldn't see, I just couldn't see why he would give everything up for this like not so nice girl. It just and didn't make sense to me. I would totally rather, he has a best friend that's Australian, I would totally rather read a book about him. See, and I would have rather read the book about the uh, his other best, next door neighbor best friend. Oh, uh, see, so there's Which like, pretty there's interesting there could have been a bunch of, in the universes that I, in this whole universe that I would have read. Um, and I was totally distracted by the pop culture references because these pop cultural references are like a little aged. They are totally, they, I mean, they are aged. However, my thought was because she was globe trotting going from like Hong Kong yeah. to Amsterdam. Oh yeah, sorry. The author was globe trotting going from Hong Kong to Amsterdam to, you know, she's from Australia. Maybe that kind of watered down when she was able to get access to these pop culture. I don't I've been to Europe and like I don't know. Like I told you, I saw a movie over there that opened three weeks later over here. So then I don't I, I, they were dated. They were dated. There's they, like there's like a lot of like watching the Devil Wars Prada and what there's a TV Which show. Does it make sense when you're talking this so this book is told from a perspective of Henry Page. It's a male perspective. Which is awesome. We need more books from a teen boy perspective. Agreed. It just was not well done at all. I just was not a fan. Like, as a male perspective, I didn't believe it. No. It would have made more sense if it was a female perspective, but it, it because it didn't work. I mean, not it's to make generalizations, but really what normal teenage guy is watching Devil Wears Prada and Fifty Shades of Grey and making these, like, random references... It felt very much like the first season of Dawson's Creek where you're like, that dialogue doesn't quite fit. I remember like when I was reading it, I kept thinking, this is what an adult thinks a teen wants to read them sounding like, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it just, it didn't flow. It didn't, it wasn't natural. The perspective just wasn't there. No. And I think, I think that you need to have intelligent characters, and I think that the intelligent characters need to be able to speak properly, and you know, references are awesome, but it just didn't click right with this. It didn't, yeah, it didn't fit. It didn't feel natural. It didn't fit. Um, yeah. Are we ready to rate I think we're ready to rate. So, I'm gonna rate the book because, I mean, it wasn't terrible. Grace was kind of annoying and Henry really irritated me. But I'm still gonna give it, I'm gonna give it two fairies. Because, I mean, in general, it was pretty good. And I'm going with two fairies, too. I think that it was, it was, for what it was, like, it was, it was decently written. Yes, the pop culture references were dated, and it didn't feel natural. But, I mean, it's just like a teen drama. It's, it's like watching something on the CW. It's all over the top and not quite where – it doesn't quite fit to real life. But you still learn, it's still entertaining. There are still 
beautiful pieces, I think, to it. There were beautiful scenes in it. Yeah. As a whole, it didn't work, but there were scenes that were beautiful. The bare bones were good. Yeah. So. And that's where we are. All right. See you next time. Adios. Bye.